Hey, what's up guys? Hope you're all doing well. A lot of you guys have been asking me about the Kraken G12 and the RTX 2080 Ti and whether these two things are compatible. The short answer is yes, but there are a few catches. For those of you who aren't familiar with the Kraken G12, it's a simple steel bracket that allows you to mount a liquid all-in-one cooler to your GPU. Now, I've said this in previous 2080 Ti reviews, but basically, if you want the best thermal and noise performance out of this GPU, water cooling is the way to go. If you don't want to go down the route of a custom loop this is easily the next best thing so today we're going to look at installation as well as thermal and noise comparisons versus the stock founds edition cooler Now, before we get started, I'll first clarify that there's nothing really wrong with the Founders Edition cooler in the first place. Nvidia have done a pretty solid job here now moving to an open air cooler instead of a traditional blower style cooler. And this means that despite just being two slots, it can cool the power hungry 2080 Ti quite sufficiently. At stock, we're seeing the GPU hit 75 degrees C and boost to 1860 megahertz with the fan speed just over 2000 RPM. Those levels are safe, they're quite reasonable and most people wouldn't have an issue with those numbers. Numbers. If you demand higher GPU clock speeds and better thermal and noise performance though, let's take a look at how you can achieve that with the Kraken G12. So this bracket comes with a 92mm fan that spins up to 1500 RPM and the mounting brackets for Nvidia and AMD GPUs. More on this later though. So this allows you to easily liquid cool your GPU and adequately cool the VRMs and memory chips on the PCB with the 92mm fan. This also means that you can choose as big a radiator as you'd like so long as it's on the supported list. And today we'll be looking at testing both with a 120mm AIO and with the 240mm Kraken X52. So let's jump right in and first we need to remove our stock cooler. This is the Founders Edition card like I mentioned earlier, so if you intend to do this with a different model, your teardown will likely be a lot simpler. In total here, there are 41 screws that we'll need to remove just to get the back plate and the cooler off of the PCB, so take your time, keep track of which screws go where, and make sure you've got the right tools. I'm using the iFixit Protec Toolkit, which I can highly recommend for this sort of job. This is a very expensive graphics card, and like many of you, I can't really afford to mess this one up. Let's start by unscrewing the four main mounting screws that hold the cooler to the GPU. These won't fall straight out, so just make sure they're loose enough for now. Next, remove the two medium screws next to the IO shield. These ones should come right out though. The tiny delicate screws are up next. Make sure you've got the correct sized screw head for these ones as they are quite small. There are a lot of these ones and you might miss a couple. So again, take your time, don't rush. Next up is the IO shield where you've got two different sized screws, but all of them do need to be removed as the IO shield does attach to the cooler as well. At this point, you should be able to remove the backplate, remove the thermal pads from the PCB for now as well, and be careful not to tear them. For the final step, you'll need a four millimeter socket head, and this is used to remove the last several screws that hold the PCB to the cooler. The four main mounting screws should also be free enough to remove at this point as well. At this point, you should be able to separate the PCB and the cooler, just be careful not to apply too much force if it's not separating easily enough you might want to double check that you haven't missed any screws lift the pcb up from the io side and then carefully remove the ribbon cable that attaches towards the end of the card you shouldn't need any tools to remove it as it doesn't seem to have any latches give the gpu and the cooler a quick clean with some alcohol wipes and now we're finally ready to install our kraken g12 and the liquid cooler so first we need to install the mounting brackets to the pcb and as i said earlier we have mounting brackets both for amd and NVIDIA GPUs. The odd thing here is that the NVIDIA mounting brackets for the 2080 Ti don't fit, whereas the AMD mounting brackets actually fit perfectly. The holes line up perfectly and the height turns out to be just right also. Just to clarify, although these fit perfectly for the 2080 Ti Founders Edition, I'm not sure whether they'll fit other GPUs like the 2070 and 2080, or even whether they'll fit other 2080 Ti models out there. Best to check online for the model that you've got on hand, or just buy the Founders Edition like I've got here. Next, install the 92mm fan on the bracket, and then the pump block from your AIO. Then go ahead and apply some thermal paste to the GPU. A high quality paste like Arctic Silver or Thermal Grizzly's Cryonaut is highly recommended for a GPU of this caliber. And just for those who are already screaming in the comment section saying that this is way too much paste, here's what it looks like after testing was done. And as you can see, it's pretty much identical to what we see from what was applied from factory. So no, less is not more. 
just make sure you don't go overboard. Next, mount the hybrid kit firmly to the GPU without over tightening, and your new Frankenstein 2080 Ti is now complete. A bit uglier than before, but with better performance. Do note that the backplate can still rest on the back of the PCB, although it can no longer be firmly mounted. Of course, just make sure that it's still resting on top of those thermal pads if you still want to use it. There is one problem though that you'll run into if you're using the Founders Edition card like I am here. You might have noticed that there's no fan headers on this card at all, and that's because the fans and the lighting are controlled by the ribbon cable that we detached earlier. This is a bit of a problem because now the fans on our hybrid kit can't be controlled by the GPU temperature. Again, this isn't a problem with most other cards. In fact, when I did the same mod for my 1080 Ti last year, we could get by this just by using a mini four pin adapter to connect the fans to the GPU. For the new RTX Founders Edition cards though, you'll have to plug both the radiator fans and the VRM fan directly into your motherboard's chassis fan headers. This means that fan speed will now be controlled via CPU temp instead of GPU temp, so you will need to do some playing around in the BIOS to make sure that those fans are tuned appropriately while gaming. For testing, I've set the fan speed for the hybrid kits to 1350 RPM. This is a quiet but still effective fan speed that I believe represents a real world use. Okay, now let's look at the results and let's start by taking a look at the GPU temperature. So with the Founders Edition cooler, we were hitting 75 degrees C. With our 120mm AIO, we get a nice reduction down to 61 degrees C, and our 240mm hybrid kit represents true overkill, with our GPU under load hitting just 46 degrees C. Given the way that Nvidia's GPU boost profile works, the cooler the GPU is running, the higher the clock speeds will run also. This means that we get about a 90 megahertz boost in clock speed just by reducing the GPU temp. And this means that our 240mm hybrid kit is sitting just shy of the two gigahertz mark. By the way, that's without any adjustments to the power limit, which it is clearly hitting. This does give us a nice little boost in game as well, similar to what you'd see by manually overclocking. But by running the GPU temp cooler here, we do potentially require some more overclocking headroom. In the end, you're likely going to be bound by a power limit on all three of these configurations anyway. Now onto the note of VRM and memory cooling since this is a big concern for such a power hungry card like the 2080 Ti. It does help that the 2080 Ti is well equipped for that amount of power though with an adequate amount of phases and high quality power stages too. The VRM on the Founders Edition and actually most 2080 Ti's out there for that matter are split across two sides of the the GPU. This means that one side gets directly cooled by the 92mm fan, but the smaller portion of the VRM doesn't really get any direct cooling at all. Now, although we're mostly focusing on GPU temps and fan noise here, I still wanted to make sure that these SMDs were running within safe levels. So after Heaven 4.0 running for 20 minutes, I measured the surface temperature of every single memory chip and power stage on the PCB, and overall I was pretty surprised with how cool they were running. At this point, it is safe to say that you wouldn't need to mount additional heat sinks to the VRM or memory chips since these temperatures are quite safe although it certainly could help. Reduced noise levels are likely the number one reason someone would like to mount a hybrid kit to their GPU in the first place though, and here they certainly do not disappoint. Firstly, I measured the noise of the 2080 Ti stock cooler compared to the 120mm and 240mm AIO running at 1350rpm. For reference, I'd say that 40dBA would be a noticeably audible level, with anything above 45dBA being a bit distracting. Next though, for a more apples to apples comparison, I wanted to see what fan speed and noise level each configuration would need to run at to keep the GPU steady at 70 degrees C. So for the Founders Edition cooler, we now have to run a bit louder than stock, with the card now running at 47.5 dBA. Since the 120mm AIO was running below 70 degrees C to begin with, I was able to reduce the fan speed down to just 850 RPM, meaning that it was basically inaudible. For the 240mm hybrid kit, I was actually forced to shut off the radiator fans completely to get it to run that warm, as even having the fans run at just 750 RPM, the GPU was sitting at just 56 degrees C. Now before you go and buy a Kraken G12 hybrid kit for the 2080 Ti, there is one more important thing that you do need to consider. Uh, so by stripping down the 2080 Ti basically to the bare PCB and then also by reducing the noise levels considerably from the fans, you do hear a lot more electrical noise and coil whine from the GPU. Now complain all you want about the, you know, heavy, dense, over-engineered Founders Edition cooler of the RTX 2080 and the RTX series in general, but they really do quite a good job of blocking this in the first place to at the point where 
you know, with the stock cooler, I didn't even really notice uh, coil wine at all. And then, you know, tearing down and putting the Kraken G12 on, it is something that I did notice quite a bit. Here's an idea of what that sounds like. Of course, on an open test bench, this is pretty noticeable, but inside a modern tempered glass case, this would likely be less of an issue. So there it is, the RTX 2080 Ti and the Kraken G12. They are compatible and the results are pretty good. So if you are after better thermal and noise performance while you're gaming, this is definitely a kit to consider. Otherwise, there really is a lot involved and this is an expensive graphics card. So you really do have to weigh up the pros and cons and also the risk of doing something like this to you know whether it is worth it for the improved thermal and noise levels. It should also be said that there are hybrid 2080 Ti's that do exist for around a $200 premium over these Founders Edition cards. So if you don't want to go the route of a DIY project like this, and you don't mind going with a 120mm AIO, those models could potentially be an option. Otherwise, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this down in the comment section down below, and whether you're personally using the Kraken G12 kit for your GPU. Of course, if you're interested in it, I will leave uh, links in the description down below, so feel free to check those out. As always, guys, a huge thanks for watching. Consider subscribing down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you all in the next one.